So again, this is a chapter two video where we're going to look into the Naive Ticket Machine. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have an external view of the Naive Ticket Machine project, um, and uh, in uh, software testing we call this a black box uh, view. Um, it's where you look at uh, the behavior and um, state of a specific object um, or application or programs to see what it actually does without looking at the code. Um, this will give us a clue about its behavior um, and what, what the objects and what the uh, program is doing. So let's have a look at that in BlueJay. So again, uh, go into BlueJay. Um, you should be able to uh, open up the objects in Chapter 2 and open up the Naive Ticket Machine. And if there's lines across the Naive Ticket Machine, it means that you need to compile it. Um, to compile it, then you just click on Compile, um, or you can right-click and click on to uh, make sure um, that it's that it's compiled. So let's have a quick look at the ticket machine. So again, as we did previously, we can right click on the ticket machine and we have our constructor there. Um, this is a bit of a different to the previous object which you created because if you notice, we're now looking to um, give it a parameter. And the parameter is of type int um, and the parameter name is cost. So we know we need to give this ticket machine a cost for a specific ticket which um, which is going to be created. So if we click on the constructor, it's going to ask us for a parameter and we know it's a type int, so it needs to be a full number. So let's call the ticket, um, say the ticket is worth 100 cents. Okay, um, as before, the uh, class has created an object and the object is then sitting on the object bench there. So let's have a right click of it first just to see what its behavior is and what methods it has. Um, it's got four methods um, there and it's got um, get balance, get price, insert money and print ticket. Um, so let's just have a look at those methods there. Um, we've come across the void methods before. If you can remember when you did your circles and squares, the void methods um, did a specific thing, so one of the void methods was to move the circle up or down. These void methods are very sim similar and will just tell the object to do something and will not return anything back. These ones with the um, int in, rather than the void will return something back. Um, they will return a type integer back, so I'm not sure what the integer is going to be, but we know it's going to be a type integer. Um, so that is the return type of that method is return type integer and the return type of that is return type integer. Again, we use this void keyword which is basically used to say that there is no return type for that particular method. Um, let's have a look at the parameters as well in these methods. Um, these, uh, the three, three of the methods don't have any parameters in the parentheses, whereas the insert money one that does have a parameter, again it's of type int um, and it's an amount. So let's have a look at this and what it does. Uh, get balance. Now that will return and it puts up a method results screen there and it will show you the return type which is zero. Um, we haven't put any money in the machine at this point. Get price. So int get price you'd assume would return the price so the int again is the uh, return type and we can see there that it's returning a type of 100. Now this is the same 100 as we put at the start when we put that 100 into the initial constructor parameter. Um, we can then insert some money. Uh, so let's try some insert some money. Uh, let's insert 50 units. Again, this uh, method is taking a parameter and is a void method, so it's not going to return anything. Okay, it takes the money and that's fine. So let's now have a look at the get balance method again, and we can see um, that we've got a balance of 50 which would make sense. Uh, finally, we've got the print ticket. Now, in theory, we shouldn't be able to print a ticket at this point because we haven't put enough money in, but let's just try it. Uh, you didn't see that uh, happen, but basically the uh, the ticket did print out. Um, but that's interesting because we didn't put the full amount of money in. Um, let's just try that again. So get balance. Now we can see that the balance of 50 is, is gone for some reason, which is interesting. So this, this uh, program is not really functioning as we should. It's very basic at this point. Um, let's get the price again. So the price is 100. Um, I wonder, can we print another ticket? Yes, we can print another ticket. So again, we've printed two tickets there. We've only put 50 cents in. And in fact, you'll find that if you can just print and you can just print away um, and the ticket machine will just print you out as many tickets as you want, which is not very really good functionality if you're the uh, railway or bus service trying to sell these tickets. Um, 
let's have a look at some other um, parts of this. Um, first of all, I'm going to try and input a negative amount of money, see if that's possible. That seems to be possible, get a balance, and the balance is minus 25, so that's functionality which is not really required, that's not useful functionality, you're not going to have minus money, so there's, there's things wrong with this, with this particular class. Um, and again, if we do a print ticket again, we can print out another um, ticket, and if we look at our get balance again, now we've got a balance of zero. So have a look at um, that naive ticket machine and have a, a play yourself. Um, if uh, you want, there's some investigations there um, in the book. Uh, 2.1 to 2.4 will give you some investigations into the naive ticket machine. Um, in the next video, we're going to have a look at the class structure and actually look underneath the code as to what's going on actually in the naive ticket machine. See you then.